Hey everyone, my name's Allie. Uh, I told you guys that I would be bringing you more MTG Arena content on this channel, so that is what this is. This is a new magic video. Keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is going to be more introductory for beginners looking to get into MTG Arena. Um, so if you're already a pro and you know all this, um, no worries, but if you are new and wanna learn, uh, please stick around and enjoy. All right, so this video is going to be centered around Oko, Oko Thief of Crowns. Uh, he's the talk of the town. You're seeing him in so many decks. He's an incredibly powerful and versatile planeswalker that we're going to see a lot over the course of the next two, two years in standard rotation. So I thought I would make a video explaining some of the interactions with him and a lot of the different ways that you can use him um, because he's definitely very important uh, to learn how to play with. Let's start with the basics. When you first play Oko in the early game, you'll most likely be using his plus two ability to create a food token. This is especially powerful if you can develop Oko on turn two because you played a Gilded Goose on turn one. Oko can make a food token to replace the food token that the goose consumed to develop Oko himself. This food can either be used to continue ramping or to create a 3-3 elk. When using Oko by himself, you'll often alternate between making a food token and then animating it into a 3-3 elk. But with Goose, uh, you can actually make a 3-3 every turn uh, by using the Goose's ability to create a food token for two mana and then animating it with Oko's plus one. It's important to note that if you animate the food token the turn that you played it, it will have summoning sickness. But if it was already there on your opponent's last turn, you will be able to attack with it the turn that you animate it. So in the case of Goose, it's usually a good idea to create the food token at the end of your opponent's turn. That way it comes in without summoning sickness at the start of your uh, next turn. So let's talk about another Planeswalker that synergizes really, really well with Oko, Nissa. So one of Nissa's abilities is to turn lands into a 0-0 creature with three plus one plus one counters. Now in the case of Oko, Oko turns the base creature, that 0-0, into a 3-3 elk with the three plus one plus one counters, making a 6-6 six, six elk. Oh in addition to that, because most of your lands will have been on the battlefield for a long time, the turn that you animate it um, into an elk with the three plus one plus one counters, it will still be able to attack that turn despite the fact that it loses its haste ability. So a few warnings with Nissa and Oko. As I was just talking about, don't animate a land into an elk if you want to attack with it that turn, if you played the land that turn, as it will have summoning sickness. Lands that turn into elks will no longer have vigilance. And lastly, elk lands will not be able to tap for mana. This trick to make big elks works with any creatures that have plus one plus one counters. So do keep this in mind when you're playing cards like Krasis or Dreadhorde Invasion. Both Krasis and any amass zombies start as zero zeros, so you'll be able to make them three stats higher with this elk ability. But beware to the similar drawbacks that we saw with Nyssa as with Krasis. So it might be a bigger creature, uh, but you will lose the flying ability or the trample. So just keep that in mind because sometimes having a smaller creature with the other abilities like flying is stronger than just a higher statted minion. So we've talked about how to use Oko on maximizing your board uh, with some supporting cards, but Oko doesn't stop there. Oko is actually incredibly useful at minimizing your opponent's board as well. Because Oko eliminates all abilities, he can cripple some of your opponent's powerful creatures and artifacts. Oh I found this to be useful against creatures like Torbran, Questing Beast, or a powerful artifact like the Great Henge. Another important note is when Oko turns something into an elk, if it was legendary before, it will still be legendary afterward. So this is important to know when targeting your own creatures, but especially important to know when targeting your opponent's creatures. By hitting Questing Beast with an Oko plus one, you make it very difficult for your opponent to play another Questing Beast with the good abilities. If they try to do it before combat, they'll have to sack the elk. And if they try and do it after combat, they'll have to lose out on the haste value of Questing Beast. 
So we've covered some of the offensive and defensive ways that you can use Oko's first two abilities. And while that is normally what you'll be doing with Oko, his minus five ability is still a powerful consideration. Oko is a low cost, high loyalty planeswalker. And that means that the turn that you play him and plus two for food, you can use his minus five ability the following turn and even have him stay alive at one loyalty after that. Oko's minus five ability is pretty limiting. Not only do you have to give up something of yours to steal something of theirs, but it also has to be a creature with three power or less. So I know that quest in Beast looks really tempting to steal, but you can't do it. I've tried. With that being said, Oko naturally creates food tokens, which are great trades for powerful creatures like Golos, Ayara, or Torbran. Now you might be thinking that many of those steel targets are also really good candidates for Oko's plus one ability and just turning them into 3-3 elks. And while that may be true, sometimes the tempo of completely removing the minion from their board, you getting it to your side and being able to attack with it the following turn is often more tempo and game winning than just turning the creature into a 3-3 without any abilities. But it really depends on the situation and the game that you're playing at the time. So in the end, it's really the flexibility that makes Oko so broco, as they say. Um, he provides a lot of options for the player that has him in play, and that is why I think that Oko is going to be seen a lot over the course of the next two years. So I hope that this video kind of went over um, all, the, all the basics and some of the cool interactions that you can do with Oko. Um, if I missed anything major or you found really cool interactions with him uh, that I didn't mention, please feel free to let me know in the comments. And I hope you liked this video. Um, I've, again, been loving MTGA and I plan to make a lot more of this style of content as well as upload some games. So if you enjoyed it, please let me know and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye guys.